Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today let's dive into one of the most controversial casting choices in recent movie history. Tom Cruise as Jack Reacher in 2012. Now if you're a fan of Lee Child's book series, you know that Jack Reacher is described as this big hulking guy. Like he's a beast. He's supposed to be this imposing figure standing at 6 feet 5, weighing around 250 pounds with hands the size of dino plates. Basically he's a total powerhouse. But then, who did they cast as Jack Reacher in the movie? Tom Cruise. Don't get me wrong, I love Tom Cruise. He's a phenomenal actor, he has been in some incredible films. Let's face it, he's not exactly the physical embodiment of Jack Reacher. Cruz is like 5'7 on a good day and he's not exactly known for his bulkiness. So when fans heard that Tom Cruise was playing Reacher, they were scratching their heads. They were like, wait, that doesn't make any sense. And when the movie came out, sure enough, you had all these diehard fans of the books going like, that isn't my Jack Reacher. Now to be fair. Cruz did bring his own flair to the role. He nailed the intensity, the charisma, the action scenes, all that stuff Cruz does best. But no matter how great his performance was, he just didn't fit the physical description of Jack Reacher that fans had in their minds. And that's why Tom Cruise as Jack Reacher is considered one of the most terrible miscasts in Hollywood. It is not that Cruz did a bad job, it's just he wasn't right for the character. Number 9. Jake Gyllenhaal as Prince of Persia Now if you're a fan of the video games or just a history buff, you might have known that Persians have a rich cultural heritage. They're known for their unique traditions, stunning architecture and diverse population. So when it announced that Jake Gyllenhaal, a talented actor but not of Persian descent, was cast as the head lead in the movie based on the Persian prince, people were scratching their heads. I mean, let's be real here, Jake Gyllenhaal is a great actor, no doubt, but he's not even Middle Eastern and he doesn't look exactly looked apart. Prince Destan is supposed to be a smash buckling hero from ancient Persia and while Gyllenhaal certainly has a charm and the acting chops he doesn't quite fit the bill physically and it's not just about the looks, it's also about representation. Hollywood has a long history of whitewashing roles meant for people of color and this was just another example of that. Fans were disappointed because they felt like this was a missed opportunity to cast a Middle Eastern actor in a role that could have been groundbreaking for representation and mainstream cinema. Now to be fair, Gyllenhaal did his best with the role and he definitely brought his A-game to the action-packed scenes and the romantic moments but no matter how great his performance was, it's hard to overlook the fact that he wasn't right choice for the role of Prince Destan. There must be a reason why you can't take your eyes off me. You're... I... Number 8. Johnny Depp as Tonto and the Lone Ranger now we all know Johnny Depp is an incredible actor, I mean, who doesn't love his performance in the Pirates of the Caribbean or Edward Scissorhands. But when it comes to his portrayal of Tonto, the Native American character in The Lone Ranger, things get a little complicated. First of all, let's talk about representation. Hollywood has a long history of mispresenting indigenous people and casting a non-native like Johnny Depp to play Tonto just as the fuel to fire. Many people felt it was a missed opportunity to cast a native actor in a role that could have been good for the indigenous people. But it's not just about representation, it's also about authenticity. Johnny Depp's portrayal of Tonto was criticized for relying heavily on stereotypes and cliches rather than offering a nuanced and respectful portrayal of the indigenous culture from the makeup to broken English. A lot of viewers felt like Mr. Mark. Now to be fair, Johnny Depp is a talented actor and he definitely brought his own unique spin to the character but no matter how good his performance was, it's hard to ignore the fact that he was miscast in the role. Number 7. Keanu Reeves as Jonathan Harker in Bram Stoker's Dracula Now before we dive in, let me say I'm a huge fan of Keanu Reeves. I mean, who isn't? He brought us so iconic roles like The Matrix and John Wick and he's just an all around awesome guy. But when it comes to his role as Jonathan Harker in Dracula, things get a little awkward. Picture this, a classic gothic horror tale set in the Victorian England. You've got vampires, blood and a whole lot of drama. And then walks in Keanu Reeves with his American accent, trying to pass himself as a proper Englishman. It's like something out of a bad comedy sketch. Oh, yes. Now don't get me wrong. Keanu Reeves is a fantastic actor but his performance in Dracula left a lot to be desired. His attempt at an English accent was well, let's just say, 
it didn't quite hit the mark. And when you're up against heavyweights like Gary Oldman and Anthony Hawkins, it's hard not to stick out like a sore thumb. But hey, let's give credit where credit is due. Keanu gives us all, and you can't blame him for that. And to be fair, Dracula is a pretty campy movie in general, so maybe his over-the-top performance was intentional. Who knows? Number 6 Now, if you're a fan of anime or manga, you'll probably know Ghost in the Shell as this groundbreaking cyberpunk series with a deep thought-provoking story. So when it was announced that Scarlett Johansson, a talented actress no doubt, was cast as the lead character, a lot of fans were scratching their heads. Well here's the thing, the main character is of Japanese heritage. She's a cyborg officer working for, for a special police force in a futuristic Japan. So when a white actress like Scarlett Johansson was cast in the role, it sparked a huge debate about whitewashing in Hollywood. Now Scarlett Johansson is a talented actress. She delivered some incredible performances in the past, but the controversy surrounding her casting couldn't be ignored. Many felt it was a missed opportunity to cast a Japanese or Asian actress in a role that could have been groundbreaking for representation in Hollywood. And while Scarlett did her best with the role, and the movie itself had some stunning visuals and action sequences couldn't escape the criticism for its casting choices. Number 5. George Clooney and Batman and Robin we all know Josh Clooney is a Hollywood hot rob, but let's face it, his portrayal of the Cape Crusader didn't quite hit the mark. I mean, we're talking about Batman here, the Dark Knight, the brooding vigilante of Gotham City. But instead of the gritty intense Batman we're used to, Clooney's version was more like a campy, straight off a Saturday morning cartoon. Sure, Batman Robin is a guilty pleasure for some of its over the top action and cheesy one liners. Chicks dig the car. This is why Superman works alone. But Clooney's Batman just didn't have that same bravado as previous interpretations like Michael Keaton. It's like if you're expecting a gourmet burger and you end up with a fast food cheeseburger, still tasty but definitely not what you're craving. Clooney has since owned up to his bad flop and even poked fun at it. Did you see him in that film? <laughs> it would just be shots of me in a rubber suit and a Batman outfit. <laughs> And let's not forget, every superhero has their off day, so while Batman and Robin might be not be the pinnacle of superhero cinema, it's still a fun ride for those who love the good dose of the 90s. Good night. Number 4 Nicolas Cage as Johnny Blaze No don't get me wrong, Nicolas Cage is a legend in his own right, known for his wild and eccentric performances, but when it came to bring the iconic Marvel Comics character to life, some fans were left feeling a little well underwhelmed. You see, Johnny Blaze is a tortured motorcycle stuntman who makes a deal with the devil to save his loved ones, becoming the ghost rider in the process. It's a dark and gritty origin story with tons of death and emotion, but when you have Nicolas Cage at the helm, things tend to get a little shy we say over the top. I mean, don't get me wrong, Cage brings his signature brand of intensity to the role, but let's be real, he's not exactly a typical brooding tortured soul. Instead, we get this bizarre mix of eccentric and melodrama that's well, it's Nicolas Cage being Nicolas Cage. You deserve a second chance. But hey, love him or hate him, you can't deny that Cage brings a certain charm to the character. And let's not forget those unforgettable moments where he's literally on fire, riding through the night like a flaming Avenger. It's pure cinematic gold, even if it's a little unconventional. Number 3 Robin Hood The Prince of Thieves Now when you think of Robin Hood, you might picture a dashing hero, scaled with a bow and a champion of the poor. But in this 1991 adaption, we got a whole new take on the character, with Kevin Costner in the leading role. Now don't get me wrong, Kevin Costner is a Hollywood heavyweight, known for his role in epic films like Dances with the Wolves and The Untouchables. But as Robin Hood, some fans felt he was missing the certain Je ne sais quoi. He's supposed to be this charismatic rogue hero, leading his band of merry men to steal from the rich and give to the poor. But Costner's portrayal came off a bit, well, lackluster. Some fans even joked that he had a bit of Midwestern vibe going on in medieval England. And let's not forget that accent. Costner's attempt at a British accent left a lot to be desired, with some critics saying it was more American cowboy than English outlaw. But hey, it's not all that bad. Robin Hood Prince of Thieves still has his moments of swashbuckling adventure and daring do. And Costner does bring his own unique charm to the role.
Number 2. Kristen Stewart as Snow White Now when you think of Snow White, you might picture the classic Disney princess, kind-hearted, gentle, and with a voice as sweet as a songbird. But in this 2012 adaption, we got a new take on the character of Kristen Stewart, stepping into the role. Now Kristen Stewart is no stranger to the big screen, known for her roles in the Twilight series and other indie movies, but as Snow White, some fans were skeptical, I mean, I mean we're talking about of one of the most iconic fairy tale characters of all time, and Stewart's portrayal was a departure from the traditional princess type. Instead of the demure damsel in distress, we got a fierce and independent Snow White who could hold on her own against the evil queen. Stewart brought a grit and determination to the character that we haven't seen before. While some fans loved the modern twist, others felt it stayed too far from the original story. And uh, let's not forget about the huntsman himself. Played by Crims Hemsworth. Talk about smooth and worthy, their dynamic was electric, adding a whole new layer of depth to the classic fairy tale. So while Kristen Stewart's Snow White might not be your grandmother's fairy tale princess, she definitely brought a fresh and unexpected spin to the character that's worth checking out. Let them come. Number 1. Tom Holland in Uncharted the Movie Now for those who might be new to the Uncharted series, let me paint you a picture. Picture this epic adventures, hard pounding action sequences and heart breaking landscapes. That's what Uncharted is all about and Nathan Drake is at the heart of it all. He's like a modern day Indiana Jones, always on the hunt for lost treasures, navigating treacherous terrain and cracking wise along the way. So when it was announced that Tom Holland would be stepping into Drake's boots, you can imagine the buzz it created. Created. I mean, Tom's got the charm, the charisma, the athleticism to pull off those death defining stunts. But can he capture the essence of Nathan Drake? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? Fans have been divided with some eagerly anticipating Tom's take on the character, while others have their doubts. But hey, let's not forget, isn't a direct adaption of any of the games. It's more like a brand new adventure, inspired by the games, so there's room for creative interpretation. Plus we got Mark Wahlberg on board as Victor Sully. Drake's mentor and partner in crime, with Mark's rock charm and on-screen presence, he's sure to bring some serious chemistry to the duo. So we might not know exactly what to expect from Tom Holland as Nathan Drake when either you're a diehard fan of the games or just you love an action-packed movie. Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more updates.